Worlds died, heroes fell, but what remains of the Arrowverse in the wake of the crisis? Welcome back to Talking Crisis with my mum. Hello and welcome back to the first podcast of 2020. And this is part two of our Talking Crisis special where we are going to be covering the remaining parts of the very impressive and uh, huge crossover that the Arrowverse have just done. Uh, We'll be covering the chapters or parts four and five, which took place across Arrow and the returning Legends of Tomorrow. So we're going to be getting into that in a moment. So I hope you all had a very happy holiday period and a happy new year to you all. And you're looking forward to getting involved in lots of other geeky TV shows with us going forward this year. We've got lots of things on the agenda and lots of exciting things to talk about. First little bit of housekeeping at the beginning. So if you are viewing slash listening to this on the YouTube channel, then if you would kindly leave us a like, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy this podcast. Also leave your comments as well in the comment section. We always love to hear from you. And if you do leave us good comments, we will feature them on the show and we'll we'll read through your comments and respond to them accordingly and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already then please hit that subscribe button and join the kingdom of geeks that is hopefully going to get bigger and better in this new decade there's also a whole bunch of links in my description box which includes the link to my twitter so you can come and interact with me on there the link to my merch shop so you can represent the kingdom of geeks wearing some geek dom merch there's also geek mom merch and talking tv stuff on there as well so check that out i also have two donation mediums so if you should feel generous enough to want to help support the future growth of the channel the podcast and everything in between then you've got two methods in which to do so there uh you're not obligated to but if you did that would really really mean a lot to me And there's also a link for Green Man Gaming. So if you're in the market for any digital games, check them out. And if you use my link and buy anything, then I will receive a small commission from the company based on what you buy. So it won't get charged to you. It's just something that they pay me for introducing you. We also have some other information regarding the podcast, but I will talk about that a little bit more in a moment when I introduce my co-host. So I think that's all the housekeeping for now. So we're just going to get stuck in without further delay. So hi there, mum. Are you there? Hello. Happy New Year to everybody. Yes, indeed. So it seems like it's been ages since we last recorded. It is is because it was before Christmas. Yeah. It's been a a month. Yeah, it has been about a month. Yeah. Yeah crazy it's so funny little things i never mentioned this to you before we started recording but like when i got everything set up i was like do i wear my headphones normally when we do the podcast i can't remember it was like (laughs) it just completely went out of my head because i had everything set up with the microphone and stuff and i was like do i normally put my headphones on and i was like yeah i do put my headphones on (laughs) (laughs) that just goes to show like how many weeks it's been because i just couldn't remember (laughs) i had to find my (laughs) headphones and put them away over christmas because they would so they didn't get wrecked (laughs) <laughs> I, I panic like oh no i can't do it i've got my headphones i found them <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so we've had obviously a good couple of weeks break and you and i have dug into quite a lot of stuff over the christmas periods we've had um the really cool dracula uh mini series yes. that the bbc did so we mentioned last year we gave some honorable mentions to things and we mentioned things like war of the worlds and his dark materials and the BBC continued with producing some good drama miniseries. So we had Dracula, which was a, an interesting interpretation of the Mm. story, wasn't it? Yeah. Lots of (laughs) familiar stuff, but like different stuff as well. Yes. So if you like Dracula and things like that, it's worth checking out just to see, what they did differently and how they changed certain things that you you know you might think you know the story well but then there are certain things that happen that you go wait that's not what i was expecting to happen or uh, that character isn't the same as they were in the original versions or whatever but yeah it's it's definitely worth a watch wouldn't you say definitely yes and then what what are they like they were an hour and a half each each part yeah. there's three so parts that's hour and that's, half. So that's four, four and a half hours yeah 
Um, but that's worth a watch. And also the uh, A Christmas Carol that they did was really good as well. Yes. That was very good. Very dark and spooky. A lot a lot more of a, a sort of ghost story, uh, a lot more grown up, you know, adult sort of take on that very well known. And again, something that's been told over and over again over the years in film and television. But they managed to bring lots of new elements into it, didn't they? Yeah, it was very good. I mean, it's like without going into too many specifics, like I liked the, you know, the stuff like to do with Jacob Marley and the fact yes. that we we got more sort of background on him. And because one of the things that I've always sort of thought, oh, it's just a like a spooky ghost thing. But like in all the previous incarnations I've seen, he's always got chains on him and he's always rattling chains and stuff. Yeah. But there's never really any reason for that it just is like oh it's a spooky ghost thing but like in this one they give context to like why he's got all those chains on him and things like that which i thought was quite a nice little touch yeah it was, it was when he met that the blacksmith guy that i assume was supposed to be like the devil or something but well he was in purgatory so i don't know mm. but that was interesting that they added that and then also like the little extra bits about the past of scrooge and what happened to him to help shape him into the person that he became and so you know there was lots of extra mm. detail that you don't get in any of the other versions of this story that I thought was pretty good yeah and and obviously Guy Pierce was in it who we and a lot of people in the UK will remember from Neighbours many many years ago <laughs> obviously he's gone on to be in lots and lots of films so he's quite well known around the world for being a movie actor but i always just still even to this day i look at him and i go oh he used to be mike the mechanic in neighbors yeah, always, that's what you think of him as neighbors don't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but he was very good very sinister very good very good actor on that yeah mm. and obviously our our fella um uh stephen stephen graham, graham. Isn't it? yeah yeah yes yeah, off our boardwalk empire. boardwalk empire yeah he was great in he it he gets and... everywhere these days mm. and andy circus was was yeah. good in it as well very creepy yep. with a weird sort of creepy Irish accent that he had. <laughs> and there was lots of other familiar faces in it too, but they're like the three three of the sort of main characters that were in the in the show. Mm. But yeah, that was really, really good. So that was another thing that if you haven't seen it, I know it's not Christmas now, but it's still worth a watch because it, it makes for quite a good ghost story. So mm. even if it's not Christmas time, I'd still recommend it. We had obviously the endings of like Watchmen and the endings of Castle Rock. In regards to Watchmen, uh, it doesn't look like it's coming back for a second season. Right. Okay. So, um, and that, I mean, that's that's fine. I mean, on one hand, it's they a shame, ended it. But... It, it. It was a, like a kind of ending that could have gone either way, isn't it? Really. Sort yeah. Of like included it. It could either go right. Well, I mean, they might do one day, and mm. if they did, they could. They didn't have a, like a this is the end sort of thing, did they? So no. But it could either go. Oh, it's a good story. It didn't matter if it doesn't come back, but then there's like there's an opportunity if they decide they wanted to mm. later stage, isn't there? So yeah, there's there's breadcrumbs, isn't there, of yeah. things that they can yeah. pick up on. So yeah, but we'll see. Very good because I've heard that um, Damien Lindelof, the guy that you know, it's a name I I always just think of Lost whenever I think of his name because <laughs> it was him and JJ that did Lost. But he was the person that was like in charge of Watchmen, and he's like left now. So because he was the the driving force behind it it's like well if if they did redo it it would be with somebody else and i'm not mm. so sure if they'd have the same kind of creative vision that he did and and it, no. it's, a, it's a worry of like this was so good they did it so well they told the story so well would someone else be able to step in and do it in the same way or would they try and bring their own stamp to it and that maybe wouldn't work as well i don't yeah. know so I'm I'm happy for it to have just been a one and done. Yeah, thing. I, I am. I, I thought it was really good. Mm. And I, the ending was good. So, yeah. yeah. We had obviously the return of Doctor Who, which mm. came back great. Like the first two episodes were fantastic. I mean, I know it's it's divided a lot of the fan base because you get a lot of people that are, I think they just want to hate on it anyway. So I I feel right. This is my personal take on things. I don't know if you agree, but I feel like if they did this storyline that they did with the and it's been out for a few weeks now, so apologies if this is spoilers, but, you know, you've had a few weeks to watch it. The mm. the return of the Master and the destruction of Gallifrey and things like that, I think if that had been done with, say, like Matt Smith or David Tennant or whatever, I don't think anybody would have been bothered. I don't think people would have been up in arms about it. But because so many people jumped on this, like, we hate it now because it's a female doctor and 
it's all politically correct and this, that and the other. I think that even if they pull out these really amazing storylines that would have been accepted back in that era, people are just going to hate it just because anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what yeah. I felt. I just thought, well, I'm sure that if this was a Matt Smith episode or if this was a David Tennant episode or whatever, you wouldn't be moaning about, oh, they're changing the extent, you know, the the uh, long-standing canon of Doctor Who and they're changing this and they're doing all these things that don't make sense and why haven't we got all these answers already? And it's but like, did they well, have a lot of bad reviews on it, did they? It's It's had mixed reviews, yeah. It's had like... A lot of people have loved it and a lot of people said, yeah, you know, this is back to the Doctor Who that I want with the story arc and things like that. But then you've had people as well like going, oh, they worked so hard to bring back Gallifrey. They did all this stuff. And now basically this has just gone and undone everything and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, come on. You know, you can't like, OK, so they brought back the Time Lords. What have they done with them since? Nothing. Nothing. They're, they're out there in the universe. Yeah. But they haven't been involved in anything. So... Why are people up in arms about, oh, they worked so hard to bring them back and then they just destroyed them all again? And it's like, but it's for a bigger purpose, hopefully. It's for a bigger storyline. So, yeah, you know, and there's no guarantees that they're gone forever because this is a show that deals with time travel and this, that and the other. So just because they're gone at the moment, we've we've seen them gone before and they brought them back. So True. I, I don't know. I just feel, I personally feel that like if this had been done with one of the the fan favorite doctors people wouldn't have been so stressed about yeah. it they say it's just that against her basically There's, yeah but against her against what Chris they do Chibnall, they're gonna yeah people you know people went against chris chibnall people went against jodie whittaker i think that it's one of those damned if you do damned if you don't you know it's like if they if they do these standalone message episodes people are going to hate it if they do canon related story arcs people are going to hate it. It's like, they're mm. not going to please them. No. But I, you know, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. Yeah. We've spoken to several other people, you know, that have enjoyed it. And yeah, I mean, they, it dipped a little bit on the last episode. We both had, and even I spoke to Zoe about it and straight away, she just went, oh, it was a load of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what did you think about this week's Doctor Who? And she went, oh, it was a load of crap. Bunch of preachy nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I mean that seems to be the general consensus. Some people online seem to have enjoyed it. There were some of the things I've seen, watched reviews and things where they were people were like, "Oh, I like the way they did this and stuff." And you know, yeah. there were merits to the episode. Like the first f- fifteen minutes was really good, but I, didn't, <laughs> I feel like it just dropped off. And the it rest, the last half an hour was <laughs> yeah. There were there were plot holes and things didn't make sense, and they rushed stuff. And I think they tried to pack too much into a you know, a 50 minute long TV show that they then couldn't, they couldn't tell the stories properly. So then it just felt very disjointed and things like that. And then that, that ending, oh God. Yeah. That she may as well have broke away and went, Hey kids, this is Jodie Whittaker. I play Doctor Who and I'd like to talk to you today about climate change. You know, so <laughs> that, that's, that's effectively what they did. <laughs> Oh dear, but hopefully it'll be better again, like this week's one, you know, with the Nikola Tesla episode and stuff. Maybe they just so. wanted to be like, be involved in everything that's been going on in the news. So they thought, yeah, we'll do that in the first episode, get that out of the way, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the story. I mean, I didn't have an issue with the subject matter because it is important, you know, and you, you look at the news at the moment with all of the, the awful fires and stuff that are happening in Australia yeah, yeah. and you know, the increases in like storms and this, that and the other, you know, like the stuff to do with the environment and global warming and stuff is an important topic. I just feel that they didn't do it very well in this episode. They didn't handle it. They they just made it more rather than let's deliver a message and, and make trying to w- raise awareness even more about an issue. It was like, let's preach to people and let's be really, you know, on the nose about it. And it was like, mm. nah, didn't work. No. We'll see what happens this week. So. So that's that's a couple of the sort of a Mandalorian. Uh, yeah, and of course, Manda. Oh, the best Star Wars thing so far. Can't forget that. Yeah, that was amazing. Really, really good ending. Very excited about what it's going to mean for the second season. The fact that they brought in something, you know, they brought in again uh, an element that's from quite deep in Star Wars lore with the with the introduction of the dark saber which is mm. something that has featured in some of the animated shows and it's in a lot of the books and stuff but it's never really been a part of the bigger star wars universe so the fact that they're dipping into something that deep in the fandom is pretty exciting and it also then makes you go 
well, what else are they going to do then in season two? Mm. I mean, especially with the whole like, yep, you've got to go off and find the planet of the Yodas to bring this baby home. So it's like, that's going to be so exciting. Awesome. <laughs> you now the daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, another thing that many people have started watching and are raving about, and I know I haven't finished it yet. I know you have, but is The Witcher. Oh, yes. It's been, oh, it's been so good. Awesome. Getting to see Superman playing the Witcher. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a good job, Henry Cavill. He looks like a, I think he looks like a very, like a buff version of Legolas from Lord of the Rings. He's uh, like, if you, yeah. if you took Legolas the Elf from Lord of the Rings and you pumped him full of steroids, that would basically yeah. be <laughs> him. Yeah. His character's awesome. Yeah. Very good. And again, lots of familiar faces, lots of character actors and people in this that you're like, I know this person from this and I know that woman from that, you know, so that's been quite good. And the, and the setting is really good. The locations are great. I, don't, I, I haven't actually looked into where they filmed it, but I imagine it's somewhere in like maybe like Scandinavian countries and stuff like Norway mm -hmm. and yeah. Sweden and places like that. It, I don't know. It's just got a feel to it that seems very Yeah, somewhere with lots of trees, Dom. Is that yes. Norway? Yeah. <laughs> like, off of the Apprentice. Yes. Or, no, no, that was Finland. Maybe oh, Spe Finland. Maybe it's Finland yeah. then. <laughs> so if, if um, Speedy, Beyond Useless Gaming, maybe he can answer that question. As oh, what... is he? Is that where he's from? Yeah, because he's from Finland. Yeah, so it's... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did, did they he's... film any of it there? <laughs> so do, you, yeah, do you recognise any of those woods? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you recognise that tree? <laughs> yeah, the tree in episode three was very, very something about that tree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but yeah, so that's been really cool. Um, and obviously we've got Titans back as well, which I know you haven't started watching yet, but I've watched the first episode of season two. And I'm excited to see what the rest of the episodes bring. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, we've got our, our fellow Ian Glenn from Clever Man. And yeah, I'm also... going to watch it just because he's in it. <laughs> <laughs> many, many people obviously know him from Game of Thrones as well. And obviously he's been in a ton of other stuff. But yeah, he's in it. That's pretty cool. I won't go yeah. into too much details. Many, many people probably are aware of who he is, but I won't say who he's going to play or who he plays no. in this season. So yeah, that's been cool. So there's been quite a few bits and pieces that we've been watching and and doing while we've been on our break and then obviously we've been waiting with eager anticipation for the return of this uh the last two parts of this crisis crossover yeah but the other big news obviously the other big start to 2020 was the fact that we're now a proper podcast yeah so not only are we now available on youtube but there may be those of you listening to us on a podcast player of some description, or you may have downloaded us as an MP3 because yes, now talking TV with your mum or with my mum, even not with your mum, <laughs> <laughs> you might talk TV with your mum as well. I mean, that's good. That's fine. Um, <laughs> is, um, is available currently at time of recording. So we are currently available on ACAST, A-C-A-S-T, and we are also available on Pod Must. So that's capital P-O-D, capital M-U-S-T, all one word. Um, so you can find us on there. We're hopefully going to be on some others soon. I've got a few things that are pending. So hopefully we'll be out there to a broader audience. So yeah, if you're joining us listening, then welcome. Welcome to the listening only listeners. <laughs> 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 so now you can listen to us on the go definitely i have got to worry about looking at the screen just plug us in and off we go yeah i mean the thing is obviously we've we've never and i've always tried to make this clear when i post about it on twitter and things like that is that yeah. we're not a video podcast you don't need to commit like especially with some of our podcasts are two and a half hours long or whatever and it's like you don't need to sit down for two hours and stare at your screen because there's nothing to see apart from obviously i put pictures up for context of the programs that we're talking about. And I try and find images that, you know, promo images and stuff that are contextual to the topics, but that's, they're there just to provide 
a backdrop. I could quite easily just use the logo all the way through and that would be it. But it's like, oh, it's yeah. a bit more interesting to put a couple of pictures in there for people. But Especially some of them are quite good as well. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean you have to watch the screen because we are no. just, we're not on video. We're not us two sat in a studio chatting or anything. So it's always been something that people could purely listen to. But I know there's been lots of things of like, oh, it'd be so much easier if it was an MP3 podcast because I could download it. Or I don't need to use as much data and this, that and the other, you know, sort of thing. So now people have plenty of options for how they can access the podcast. People listening to us on your various platforms, you can visit obviously the YouTube channel as well. And if you want to check out the other stuff that I have that I'm doing, that would be fantastic. And all the links to things are on in the description on the video version of the podcast. I do have links on the podcast players as well. So if again, if you want to help support in any way or anything like that, then that's fine. You know, you can do that too. But yeah, it's just, it's exciting. It's, it's you know, the beginning of a new year, beginning of a new decade. We said that we were going to get up and running in those ways and we have. Yep. So yes, I mean, I've got other things, you know, myself for my channel and stuff that are going to come this year too. Um, because I was, you know, for example, I got a, um, I finally got my camera Yay. for Christmas. Thanks. Thanks to Zoe. So thank you, Zoe. I know you're listening. So thank you very much <laughs> again for that. So that's going to allow me to do more video related content on my YouTube videos. And yeah, there's various other things that ideas and things I've got in the works. I'm hopefully going to be streaming more this year and, you know, doing more live stuff and things like that. So yeah, so hopefully we had a good first year. The podcast did well in the first year. So hopefully we're going to go from strength to strength this year. Yeah, because then when you have your link ups with your friend, uh, other people on Pacific, like you did your Star Wars one, you can you, be on the podcast as well. That'd be mm. awesome too, wouldn't they? Exactly. Yeah, the Star Wars podcasts are going to go up as well. Yeah. I'm just trying to sort out the image for them at the moment. Because when I tried doing it before, the cover image went a bit skew if. So I might have to re <laughs> re retool that a little bit and make it slightly mm. smaller so that it fits. But yeah, they're definitely going to go up. And then obviously I might do more of those like one-off recording, you know, like individual podcasts in the future with other um, creators and stuff. Yeah. Um, and obviously Kevin Smith, you know, the offer is still out there if you want to come and join us at any point in the future. Yeah, now we're a proper podcast. <laughs> podcast. You can come and chat to us. Yeah. Uh, so open invitation, Mr. Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. I will, I'll be watching your new film soon, by the way, because um, cause my, my girlfriend just bought uh, the DVD. So I'll be watching that soon. Um, I'll let you know my thoughts. I'll send you a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> First Kevin Smith of the year. Yeah, I had to mention him, you know, it, it would be weird if I didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was the other thing? But yes, um, talking year. about the, the year that we've had, we are approaching our one year anniversary. Yes, in our birthday. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that when I looked and I was like, oh my God, it's going to be our one year anniversary. So we're hopefully going to do some bits and pieces to mark the occasion on the next podcast, yes. which will be which will be the first proper talking TV with my mum podcast going forward, because obviously this is part two of our, our kind of special on the crisis. So, yeah, that's going to be cool. So um, I've got a few ideas and things like that. But like if you want to leave us any questions or comments or if you want to send us an audio like an mp3 thing that i can insert into next week's podcast just sort of you know wishing us a happy first anniversary or whatever it is then you know feel free to do that again you know contact me on twitter and i'll i'll tell you exactly how you can go about doing that kind of thing so yeah we'll we'll hopefully have an exciting show for you next week as well so there yeah so yeah interesting exciting start to the year mum yeah can't wait couple of things I want to throw in quickly then. Obviously, we mentioned about the, the news about uh, Watchmen not potentially not coming back. Obviously, we know that Mandalorian is definitely happening for a second season, and that will be at the end of the year. The Expanse is now back, which we're going to be covering, and we're going to start covering that as of next week. We've got, uh, oh, something you and I talked about that I found out recently, a couple of days afterwards, is um, Westworld Season 3 returns on the, I think it's the 15th of March. Yes. So we've got that to look forward to in the not too distant future. So that's pretty exciting. Yes. There's going to be a bunch of new shows coming this year. Um, we've got things like Stargirl, which I'll talk a little bit more about towards the end of this. But yeah, we've got that coming from the, the it's going to be a DC app show. 
but it so that might mean it'll come on netflix like titans and stuff i don't know but obviously you know we have our our means of catching these things yes it's part of the Balantiverse, though so it's being made by the same people that make the arrow shows and things like that so that should be interesting there's also we'll have his dark material season two which will be at the end of the year um oh interesting bit of news i heard in regards to the witcher which is apparently looks like uh mr mark hamill might be joining the cast for the second season oh so that'll be interesting luke skywalker himself um yes. that's been confirmed that it's happening and but it's unlikely that we'll get it until 2022 okay because obviously it's quite a big production so it yeah. takes them a while to film it all and things like that so we'll have a bit mm. of a wait for the second season of the witcher what else was there um walking dead obviously we know that's coming back in february and this new spin-off which i don't know i don't know how much interest i have in this oh this walking dead one yeah no I kept my boss told me about it and i thought i don't know about that mm. i have to give it a look possibly but don't know yeah, oh, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Teenage, about the teenagers or something, isn't it? Yeah, and it's set in a different location, and you know, it's not going to be connected to the main shows. The only thing that connects them is obviously the the zombie virus thing, yeah, and that's yeah. about it. I don't know. I'm. Uh, I'm not sure. I might give it a look, but I. I don't know whether it will end up being one that we cover on this on this podcast. No, I think that's it. For now, um, oh, the other thing we watched, Lost in Space. I was just going to say that. <laughs> we watched Lost in Space as well, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we watched Lost in Space and we kind of blazed through that because that was all available on Netflix. Oh, wow. The the budget on the special effects was awesome. Yeah, very, very good. Very exciting. So, yeah. Furthered the story, made answered some questions, threw open a whole bunch of other questions. There is going to be a third season, so that's good. I don't know when that's coming, but given the fact that we had like a year or so to wait. Yeah, this well, based one... on the budget they used on the special effects, it's going to be probably a while, like at least two, another year. Mm. Have we got any more Orville coming back this year? Yeah, the Orville is coming back this year. And obviously Discovery at some point. Discovery hasn't got a date yet, but that'll be this year. But that's again a nice segue. Next week, 23rd of January, Picard. Oh, yes, they've been going on about it on the radio. Mm. I on didn't realise I didn't realise on Links FM. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realise it was as soon as it is. Mm. So that took me a bit by surprise because I was like, well, I know it's cut we knew it was coming soon, but I didn't know it was coming that soon. So yeah, that's gonna be an interesting one to check out. Mm. And we might it might be one that maybe we'll cover, maybe we'll just sort of chat a little bit about it in the way that we've chatted about some of these other shows. Yeah. Um, and not do like a deep dive into it. We'll just sort of overview sort of quick discussion on it yeah but yeah i'm intrigued to see what it's going to be like you know and to see how it plays out apparently it's already been commissioned for a second season oh even before this first one's aired so that's quite cool mm. and one other thing if any of you didn't get to see good omens last year and you are in the uk it's currently on bbc2 on a wednesday yes. night at nine o'clock you can watch it on your iPlayers. Yeah, go on to our BBC iPlayer and watch it because it's a phenomenal. Ph there, 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 I can't speak. That, phenomenal. That's how good it is. It's a phenomenal. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good show. Um, mm. <laughs> definitely worth the watch. If you missed it when it was on before, you've got an opportunity to watch it again now, and we couldn't recommend it enough. Yeah, I, I might watch it again as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's already started. It started like this week, just gone. Yeah. It was on Wednesday, yeah. just gone. Couldn't believe um, that. I thought, wow, yeah. Mm. So, yes. But yeah, I think that's it. I mean, there's a couple of things. There's a couple of little things that I want to mention that are related to geeky, like movie things. But I've got an idea in relation to that that will come into play next week. So okay. I think it might be a bit more appropriate based on something you and I have discussed that we might be doing next week. So, um, okay. yeah, right, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cryptic. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Right then, if you're ready, strap yourself in and we will get underway. Indeed. Crisis on Infinite Earths, part four. So this was the Arrow episode. I got myself a bit confused because I thought for some reason I thought it was Legends, then Arrow. But... Yeah. It turns out it's Arrow, then Legends. And so we get a bit of a flashback to begin with of what happened in the last part. 
because it was weeks ago. The, the general sort of big thing you need to know is obviously the crisis had come. If you need to know any more information, go back and check out the first podcast. There should be a little eye icon appearing at the top of the screen right now that will link you back to that one. And that will fill you in on everything you've missed. Um, yeah. But the main part at the very end was that Lila, John Diggle's wife, who had become the like avatar of the monitor had been taken by the anti-monitor. She then unexpectedly returned towards the end when everything was looking dire. The antimatter wave was wiping out universe after universe. She appeared and then it transpired that she'd basically been taken over by the anti-monitor. She yeah. then fought the actual monitor and destroyed him, taking on all of his powers and then unleashing the antimatter wave so that it sped up and it wiped everything out everything like everything every universe ever was gone including the wave rider that the remaining heroes were on now just before the wave hit well nash wells was able to use his new powers to whisk away the paragons so we were introduced to the paragons and they represent all different aspects of things, love, hope, strength, humanity, that kind of thing. And they were all whisked away somewhere out of the reach of the anti-monitor and the antimatter wave. That place turned out to be the vanishing point, which we had previously seen in Legends of Tomorrow, which is a place that exists outside of any known universe and outside of time and space. So it's kind of like in its own little bubble. And that was where the paragons were sent. They were all sent there and then they were all, you know, why, where are we? What's happened? And Sarah's like, oh, this is the vanishing point. We've been here before with the legends. Then Superman, Brandon Routh Superman, started feeling a bit funny. He collapsed to the floor, started glowing, and then he was gone. And in his place was Lex Luthor, who had rewritten the Book of Destiny to allow him to survive and take the place of Superman. And that was basically how it ended with everybody yes. gone. The anti-monitor had won and was reshaping everything to become an antimatter universe. And we had seven heroes stuck outside of time and space with no idea of what to do next or how they were going to get back or how they were going to save anything. The other little bit we got was the, the death of the Green Arrow, who then was found in purgatory and before he could be returned back to the mortal realm was approached by a man called Jim Corrigan who was the embodiment of this powerful cosmic being known as the Spectre. He then used the arrow lines of having to become someone else to become something else. And he passed the mantle of the Spectre onto Oliver. So Oliver did not return to the mortal realm because he has now become the Spectre. But that was all we saw. He sent the heroes back that had gone to save him from purgatory, and then he remained there. That brings us on to this episode. So we yep. start with a flashback to the planet Maltus 10,000 years ago, yep. where we see Mar Novu, the monitor. And he was in like a, it was like a laboratory, like science place, wasn't it? Mm. And he was there with his wife, who he had mm. mentioned a little bit previously, but we'd never seen. And he's there with his wife and it turns out that he's like, he's a scientist and he's a, an explorer and they built this device and it's a time travel device, which will allow him to go to the beginning of time and see the birth of the universe, the birth of all creation. And yeah. he's, you know, wanting to sort of find out all of this stuff about where did everything come from and stuff like that. So they get the device up and running and he's got some kind of tether that, she mentions and she says that'll keep you connected to stuff and you know prevent anything from going wrong and and also keep him from being like a almost like a foreign body in the universe so it because it, you know his presence there could have an impact on creation so he goes through and it's all like green and it's just all lights and chemicals and he's like oh it's beautiful it's all really nice and stuff like that but then something goes wrong and he yeah. ends up on a planet and it's like, wait a minute, he's on a planet, but it's at the beginning of the universe. There, there are no planets yet. And this planet is very, it looks like a quarry somewhere, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's very yeah. much got the look of a quarry. Yeah. 
and he's looking around and stuff and he's like where am i and the connection with his wife is very crackly and she's basically something went wrong and you're not where you should be and it turns out that he's actually breached the wall in dimensions and he's not in the main universe anymore he's actually in an antimatter universe yeah and then we get the reveal of the anti-monitor so this was yeah. the first point in time where the multiverse kind of becomes a thing and the anti-monitor is revealed so he opened the door so by him wanting to explore time and space like doctor who i suppose he yeah. breached the walls of reality and allowed the anti-monitor to become aware of the existence of a matter universe mm. so it's like oh so all of this is your fault you know yeah. you're to blame really for all of this <laughs> well, none of this would have happened if it hadn't been for you now the interesting thing about that as well i've got a few facts and easter eggs that i'm going to go backwards and forwards on as we go through this so the monitor's origin so this was changed slightly from the comics and what they've done is they've combined his character with a character in the, the dc comics called krona who is related to the green lanterns which that in itself is quite interesting because when he went through the portal thing it was all green so yeah. it's like ah oh, he's connected to the green lanterns and stuff so it's like is that is there some significance there i don't know so the guy he's sort of based on krona was a was from maltus and he was a scientist obsessed with witnessing the dawn of time and obviously in this we see it's Marnavu instead and he goes back and so what they did they, they sort of smushed together two concepts to to do this so then you get the breaching into the antimatter universe and again this is similar to what happened in the comics um but what they did is they they streamlined it all to make the whole storyline a little bit less messy and a little bit less comic booky mm. So yeah, so that that scene is straight out of the comics, just tinkered with to to have slightly different characters. Um, right. So that's our first little bit of a sort of Easter egg. So then we go from this flashback to now to our heroes that are stuck on the vanishing point. Yeah, yeah. Because we start with we had Mister Choi. Is it Choi? Uh, Ryan Choi. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, writing his memoirs. Yeah, he was doing about, a voiceover, wasn't including he? Including his opinions on the others, on the other people. And he, yeah, the, sort of the other paragraphs. What they were all up to and how. They... He was also saying, so and so is this, but they don't have that sort of. Was he, you know, whoever was hope and that, but they seem to have lost hope. Oh, like, and... um, yeah, because Kara, he sort of said, Supergirl, the paragon of hope, who appears to have lost all of hers. Mm. And she was carrying Superman's cape. Which again, that's another mm. Easter egg because that's a callback to one of the covers during the Crisis comic books where it was a reversal. It was actually Superman carrying Supergirl's cape. Um, ah, right. So they, they twisted that a little bit, but that was a reference to a co comic book cover from that actual storyline. Um, and yeah, he does all that. And then he says about what they're all doing and how they're all dealing or not dealing with this new reality. Mm. And then he mentions about the paragon of love is missing that yes. Barry Allen, the flash just took off and nobody knows where he went. Yeah. No. And then we had him, we saw, we saw him working with Lex Luthor mm, because of obviously them two create, being uh, very clever and very technologically and scientifically minded. Mm. They were trying to use the stuff that was on the vanishing point, weren't they? They're trying to make a teleporter, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And it was funny, again, <laughs> another little reference, like the fact that he kept calling him Mr. Luther. Very yes. much like in, you know, in the old Superman films with Gene Hackman. And his cronies mm. would refer to him as like, yes, Mr. Luther, okay, Mr. Luther, you know, and all that stuff. So that was very much like a homage almost to that Gene Hackman era of Lex Luthor. Mm. And yeah, they were like, so and they, they were like, well, where are you going to go? Saw this teleporter. <laughs> Well, yeah, they just wanted to see where it went to take him out of there at all. And so Supergirl said, right, you made it. You can go through it and told Lex Luthor he had to test yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> because it's like we're not going to – it's a big risk and we don't want to risk any of us lot and you're the bad guy here. I don't know where we're going to go. So, yeah, they tried it and then it didn't work, did No. <laughs> and then Barry Yeah, appeared. and then Barry showed up looking very disheveled and looking very upset. Yes. And the fact that he had an issue with his connection to the Speed Force. 
Yeah. He said that it went to the Speed Force and he said they're all doomed, basically. Yeah, and he couldn't, he couldn't go anywhere, could he? Because obviously the Speed Force no. runs through, like, reality. Um, mm. And he couldn't go anywhere because basically all the doors are shut because everything's been destroyed. There's nowhere for it to take him. And then he no. said he thought he'd only been gone a short amount of time and it turned out he'd been gone for months. Yeah. Which, yeah. again, was quite nice in a way. to That was a nod to us, I think, the fact that we had to wait over a month for the show it was almost like it brought it into real time of like they've been there all this time and barry's been gone for ages just like we've been gone for ages because we had no show to watch yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah clever and then we had a bit with uh the specter or is it specter yes that's right and he was with that corrigan mm -hmm. guy and he was looking into the arrow's life all the things that that's happened that him. was quite cool wasn't it getting to see like key mm. battles and key moments from oliver's time as the green arrow yeah and, and he told him he's got to fight them he's got to fight the anti-monitor and he's like you're the only one that's got the power and then he said about the light in the, the you're the spark to light the flame or something which yeah. is a line that was important again later on mm. and that's why he's been gifted these powers because it's like you're the one you you don't have to use these powers to save everybody and then didn't he say like about not being able to do it on his own and corrigan's like yeah that's right you need some of your friends but they're yeah. all gone. Maybe not all of them. So then he shows up on the vanishing point. Yeah. And we had Barry saying he wanted to try again in the, the Speed Force. Yeah. And Ollie was telling him that the Speed Force is the key to saving everyone because he has to... Is that because he needed to get them to places because he, he started telling them about what happened to the monitor? Mm -hmm. And he had to split them up. Some had to go to the... What was it called? Mat Mat Maltus. Planet Maltus and the others had to go to the dawn of time. Yeah, so basically, although everything in the here and now has been destroyed, because the speed force runs through all of reality, it allows yeah. time travel as well. So it's like that's why it's the key yeah. because it will allow us to change things in the past, which will prevent this future from becoming a reality. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like three of some of you need to go to the planet Maltus to stop the, stop monitor, the monitor from doing, doing this it experiment. In the first place. And the rest of you need to go to the dawn of time in order to deal with the anti-monitor. The anti-monitor, yeah. Um, there was also a funny line. There was a couple of little movie references in this episode because Oliver, when he turned up, he was kind of ghostly and glowing and he had a hood on. And somebody mm. said about the new look. And then Ryan Choi sort of said, yeah, very Sith. And it's was like, a, oh, Star Wars reference. <laughs> so that's quite funny. Um, and then Barry was sort of doubting himself, wasn't he? And it's like... They were, I mean, they were overwhelmed about Oliver reappearing in the first place, but yeah. then he came up to Barry and he sort of said that the power's within him and then he he bopped him on the head. He just, like, poked him in the head. And he was like, what was that? Mm. And he said, I've unlocked your potential. And I was like, yeah. that was really, I don't know, simplistic. It was almost like he may as well have booped yeah. him on the nose or something, the way he just got sort of poked <laughs> him in the head and went, I've unlocked your potential, Barry. And so he's like, okay, this is the plan. We're going to split up. And I'm going to use the speed force to drop you off where you need to go. Yeah. So he does just that, doesn't he? Yeah, he decided Supergirl, Choi, Choi and Lex were going to be sent to Maltus. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, Jean and Kate had got, had got to go to the other place, didn't they? But things went wrong, didn't they? Mm. Because... This is where I got a little bit confused, so I'll let you talk a bit. For well, a so he's obviously <laughs> travelling through the speed force to take them where they need to go. And then he got, mm. um, like, attacked, or they got attacked by the anti-monitor somehow became aware of their presence. And you just get him appearing and, like, going, Rawr! and then, like, everything seemed to destabilize. And then it was mm. like, oh, no, somehow everybody split up. And, Ol and Barry basically just appeared in a place. And it's like, where is he? <laughs> and he looks around, and he's like, Queen Consolidated. And he's like, what's going on? And then Oliver appeared, but it was Oliver dressed like in a suit and stuff like that and this was like echoing their first ever meeting because yeah. barry was wearing like the outfit and stuff he wore when he first met oliver queen mm. which was pretty cool and he explained to it and he's like i'm here but i'm not here this is like a part of me and he's like what do you mean he's yeah. like the anti-monitor attacked us in the in the stream in the speed force and now everybody is scattered and you need to save them before they end up basically being consumed by the speed force. And he's like, I'm using all of my powers available to me to try and keep all this tethered together. 
but I don't know how long I can hold it. And he's like, how am I supposed to save everybody? And he sort of said something about using the connections between you or something like that. Or something yeah. to do with using connections, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. So then that was like Barry's mission. Barry, you need to go back into the Speed Force and you need to locate. Cause that was the other thing. So he was like, the Speed Force is like infinite. How am I going to find everybody? And that, oh yeah, and that's right. And that's when he said about using the things that connect you, the 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 ties that bind you type thing. And they all got sent to places that were connected to stuff to do with the past. And now Oliver's told him this, where is everybody? Well, Supergirl, Troy and Lex were thrown onto some onto that uh, planet what well, yeah this is and lex wandered off that bit happened but first, that was the it? weird thing was that they did and they didn't because you also got supergirl in the place with oliver which was during the first crossover she had with the arrowverse yeah with the alien invasion that time where her and oliver well they just well they, basically they showed them London, and then when they got up, they went, where's Lex? And then they went on further, didn't they? And and they had the, yeah, but what I'm saying is that there was um there was the confusing aspect of him dropping them off on this planet Maltus, and in a little wink to the audience, I think, about, like, this is basically filmed in Canada. He sort of, Ryan Choi was like, I thought this alien planet would look more alien, you know? And it's like, why does it look yeah. more like a place on Earth sort of thing? And it's like, that's because it kind of is, but, like, that was a funny little kind of meta reference to the audience mm. so they were there and they were talking about how they would find the monitor and then he saw the city and he said anywhere with a big city like that has got to have an infrastructure and there's got to be some form of like communication because oh yeah because didn't Clara yeah. say it's not like we can send him a text and he was like maybe we can and then <laughs> they were all stood there and then obviously when they were pondering over this then Lex took off and then she's like oh for god's sake sort of thing and oh, there was the other movie reference, the comment about it being an alien planet and worrying about chest bursters and face huggers. And it's like, that's a reference yeah. to aliens. <laughs> so yeah, but but what I'm saying is what was confusing was that they were there, but equally, you also got the where Su Supergirl was with Oliver in the timeline of the um the alien invasion. So it's yeah. like, was that but I I I couldn't quite work out. That's something I couldn't quite work out, was whether that was Oliver in that memory or whether that was supposed to be Supergirl in that memory you know mm. that was one thing because I was like but wait Supergirl's on the planet Maltus in the past but Supergirl's also here yeah. but Oliver's there but Oliver's a spectre so is this Oliver's memory that Barry's got to save him from or is this Supergirl's memory it was you know that bit was a little bit hazy for me mm -hmm. and you also had like um Oliver meeting Ray Back when Ray first came into it, when he was the CEO of Parmatech, and we weren't really sure about who this guy was and what he was up to. And Oliver went to see him and they were talking about Felicity and stuff. And um, Batwoman showed up there. And she's kind yeah. of like, hi. And they're like, who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> you know, it's like, um. <laughs> so that was weird. Yeah. You had the, again, was it, uh, who was it? Laurel and. Sarah, Sarah was dead. And there was Laurel and Laurel Diggle. Laurel and Diggle, that's right. And it was the time when Sarah died back in the early days of Arrow uh, before they took her to the Lazarus pit and brought, brought her back to life. So she was there. So that was where Sarah ended up. I'm trying to think, were there any other weird memories? That Was that it? Um, oh, and then, the, and then there was the other one with Barry when he was in the time where um, the other crossover the Elseworlds one with the bad Superman and stuff like that. Yeah, Flash Superman and Ollie Lewis. And he was, didn't all of, when, didn't Flash when he showed up, he went, wait, I wasn't here for this. No, that's right. And he's like, why am I in this memory? So again, again, it was confusing because it was like, who's he there for? Is that, is that his, like, is that Oliver again? Or is that, so it was like, those bits were a little bit confusing as to yeah. who exactly these were, because Oliver was in three of them. You know, yeah. Oliver's in three of these places. So it was like, is it parts of Oliver? Is it to do with the other characters? I I, I found that a bit hard. I did. I found it really work confusing, that out. yeah. Yeah. But the point of the matter is they were showing key scenes and key moments from the past of Arrow and other shows. And it was quite a nice little trip down memory lane of like, remember these things? Remember these old crossovers yeah. and stuff like uh that? What about the other Flash guy? But, uh, yes. While going through the Speed Force, 
Barry ended up at like a version of like Star Labs or something. Yeah. And he was a bit confused about where he was. And he looked down, there was a flash suit in the background and stuff. And before he had a chance to react to anything, we got, I mean, this was technically, this was the biggest cameo that they've had. Uh, I mean, I know for us personally, the biggest cameo was Lucifer, but Mm. logistically and what it means was the biggest cameo ever. Because yes, our Flash came face to face with the movie universe Flash. Ezra Miller from the Justice League and the little bit in Batman versus Superman and things like that. He was there. Somehow they got Warner Brothers Studios to allow one of their movie characters to appear in this Mm. Arrowverse crossover. That's huge. That is great yeah. because there's always been such a big division between the, these are the DC movies and this is the DC TV stuff. Yeah. Um, but they've now established they're all part of the same multiverse. And yeah. that was just insane because we talked when we talked a little while back about all of the teases and all the information we had about the stuff that was going to go on in this Arrowverse stuff. There was talk about there might be something to do with the DC movie universe, but mm. we were just assuming it'll be a mention or it'd maybe be a shot of them. In in the distance from taken from the film and inserted into the episode or something. Not that they were actually going to get one of the movie stars to actually appear in the show. And he had this really funny little exchange with our Barry. It was so funny. And they were like looking at each other and sizing each other up and poking each other and marveling each like talking about each other's costumes. It was like, what? The Flash? Yes, because he didn't. This is clearly, again, what's interesting now is that this established that the Flash in the movies got his idea for his name from meeting from Barry Allen Barry. the Flash from the <laughs> TV shows. And also there was a bit which I don't know if I'm right, but he said he said he told Victor this was possible. Yeah. Was he on about Stein? No, no, not that Victor. Oh. Um, Cyborg, the, um, the character oh. Cyborg, uh, who's in the Justice League movies. Okay. So that was a reference again to the film universe. But yeah, it was just so funny seeing Ezra Miller interacting <laughs> with with R. Barry. You know, it was just yeah. kind of like, it was really funny. And like he said about, I really love your costume. And he was like, it's so lightweight and stretchy. And it's like, because obviously <laughs> his one is really clunky, like metallic looking. Yeah. And he's like, I bet it's really good to run in that. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's great. And all this stuff. And then Barry was yeah, just kind of like, chat, but, <laughs> this shouldn't be possible. No. Like being able to, like being here, this is another universe. But all the universes were wiped out. So how is this possible? So that was interesting because that was never really fully explored of like, how is it possible that, but then again, it was like the past clearly because of the fact that this Flash didn't have the name The Flash at this point. So I imagine it's like, it's possible because you're in the past, Barry, you're not in the present day. You have, you have crossed into another world, but not now, you know, because there are no other worlds. But yeah, it was just a really big deal because You know, it was a cameo from the movies. How the hell they managed to keep that quiet, I have no idea. Yeah. Like how nobody got a a wind of it and it wasn't leaked or anything is unbelievable. Uh, And and you would probably did some snipping, didn't you? Yeah, over Christmas I did. Over Christmas, I will admit, (laughs) I did type into Google about like um, news to do with the crisis, you know, thinking I wonder if I can find anything out about (laughs) it before it comes back. And there was nothing. There was nothing about any of it they said that you know oh we've got a few more things lined up and a few things up our sleeve but there was no you know no leaks or anything Mm. so the fact they kept that under wraps was insane (laughs) very very exciting so anyway after that moment barry's kind of like i have to go sort of thing you know so he took off he he, he took off then we saw supergirl on that planet she found lex and he was exploring he said he was exploring the planet yeah something to do with world domination or something and she, she said, you're not going to get up to your old tricks. And then he zapped her with his new powers that he yes. created himself. Because didn't he say and he something? Cho- and he got Choi as well. Didn't he say something about like that when she said about old tricks? And he was like, ah, that's why I gifted myself some new tricks. And yeah. and then he's like, I gave my, when I rewrote things, I gave myself an upgrade. And he like shoots lasers out of his hands and stuff. And yeah, he knocked Ryan flying. He knocked down Supergirl. And then he took off. And then he showed up. He found novu's lab didn't he well yeah well they got up but then they they came when he found her and they came to they 
they realized that she said what he was up to that he said something about domination uh, power what was it will domination or i don't know what he said universal he said, domination universal domination he said they had to go, they had to stop him from messing everything up yeah because obviously if he gets there he's going to mess it up because he's going to do it for his own purposes rather than what they're trying to do mm -hmm. so uh we, yeah we saw the monitors are just about to do the trial wasn't he and lisa turned up yeah and he's like i don't think you quite want to do that and he's like who are you how did you get in here and he's like I, wouldn't you be more shocked about the fact that I'm a human on your planet <laughs> and all this kind of stuff? And, like, and then he explained, I'm a time traveler and I'm here to make you an offer. And he explains a little bit about you're going to do this thing and it's going to go wrong and it's going to cause all this stuff. And it's basically going to wipe out everybody. And I don't want yeah. that. That's not in my best interest. And it's not in your best interest, really. So I propose that we join forces and this, that and the other. And you're like, yeah, oh, it's a trade no. info for, the, for his abilities. And he got the brave mm. and the bold. Yes, which the was bold. a nice, again, the brave yeah, and the bold, the brave and the bold, bold as in like bold headed, which yeah. is <laughs> a lovely reference to the comic book, the uh, Batman comic, I think it was, and the animated show called The Brave and the Bold, B-O-L-D. Oh, okay. So him using that line and emphasizing it in such a way was like, here's another little comic book reference. <laughs> mm. Oh, and the other comic book reference, when we saw Supergirl and Ryan and they're like, we need to find Luther. Yes. And she's like, He's like, I've never done this on an alien planet. I've never done that. And she was like, bet you've never flown on an alien planet either. And he's like, what? And then she was like, yep, yeah, it's the quickest way. And he's like, but, and she said, it's all right. Nothing to worry about. It's a simple case of up, up and away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was, again, that was an old school Superman thing. Like, yeah. go back to the old, was it, what's his name? The guy that was Superman years ago. Is it George Reeves or something like that? that came before Christopher Reeves. Yes, whoever it was, but I remember that's what this, they used to say, didn't they? Yeah, it was like the old Superman catchphrase thing. So that was quite funny that she said that. With, and the, there was a big grin on her face as if like, it's a <laughs> knowing thing. <laughs> <laughs> so then, yeah, so then that was all going on. And in between that, we had all the bits we've just discussed of seeing all the different memories and Barry showing up in each of them and going, oh, you know, this isn't real. You're not really here. Like when he showed up where um, Sarah was dead and then he, they're yeah. like, who are you? And then he's like, sorry, I can't explain. This is too complicated. Uh, this isn't real. You're not really here. And then he like zapped her and she went, oh, and they're like, oh my God, it's a miracle. You brought it back yeah, to the dead. Yeah, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, like, no time to explain. We've got to go. And then he whisked her out there. And then there was the bit obviously where Kate was talking about Oliver being stubborn and and always in you're like this in in everything you, you know you have this problem with connecting with people and huh maybe I do as well maybe that's a lesson I need to learn going forward and then Barry showed up there and took her away and there was the John talking to Ollie and Supergirl one bit as well yeah where he was like you know you don't know this yet but you're going to be friends or something and that, you know, we all need to work together and this, that and the other. And it was like, that was weird because it was like, why was John there? Mm. How did John get there and stuff, you know? And it was, I don't know, it was all a bit, because he obviously, I know he was there, but I mean, it's like, why was he part? I don't know. That was, again, it was confusing. Like, confusing. like why Barry got sent to save everybody, but it was John, the one that was like the one that talked through that situation with Oliver and Cara. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a bit weird. But anyway, That's he, I got a bit confused. <laughs> he managed to round them all up. and. The last bit he rounded up was before, well, we cut them back to Supergirl and Ryan getting to the laboratory place. and Telling seeing the monitor Lex. not to trust Lex. Yeah. And he then, again, used his powers again, didn't he? And, like, Ryan got out of there with Manu Vu and he was like, you don't want to trust this guy. Trust me. Come with me and all this lot. And they got out there and then Supergirl had a fight with Lex. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And they went upstairs and they found that his wife had been like knocked out and he was like, oh, no. And then Ryan gave him a, a speech about about being the best you can be and like doing the right thing and this, that and the other. And then he said something because Ryan had been questioning his place and all this. I haven't got any powers. Mm -hmm. I haven't got this, that and the other. And then he what he said got through to Marno Vu. And he was like, I'm not going to, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to go ahead with this. And he was like, something about your humanity or something. I can see why you're the best of humanity or something like that. And then you're like, ah, this is why him being the paragon of humanity. It's like, so you do have a purpose, Ryan. Mm. And then they basically, they got the, the fighting to start. It's like, he's agreed, stop fighting. He's agreed to not do it. And Lex is like, oh, damn it. You spoil a perfectly good bad guy plan. <laughs> 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 and then Barry showed up and whisked them all away. They whisked them all to the dawn of time, didn't they? And they were on that planet, yeah, the planet mm. where the monitor had gone. 
and they're there for the final showdown and you get the epic sort of pan out shot of them all stood together facing off and then the monitor appears and he's like you shouldn't have come here and he's like whatever you do is pointless because I will always win. And they're like, but we stopped Mano Vu from doing his experiment. And he's like, but that was one version. In yeah. the multiverse, there are many, and there will always be one whose curiosity gets the better of him. And when that happens, it will allow me to, to do all of this, you know? So it's kind of like, no matter what, you, unless you went to every single version of the multiverse, you're not going to stop this thing from happening. No. So it's like, oh dear, and then he summoned all of his shadow demon things again, and they're yeah. all there, floating up in the air and stuff. And it's like, uh oh, we're gonna have a big fight on our hands. And then Oliver yeah. showed up as well, and basically was like, you need to, you need to do this. This is a big. This is the final fight. This is where it all goes down. And you have I'm... to keep them under control, and so he can go and rebirth the universe. Yes, and he's like, you need to buy me time so I can do this. And then he said again the line about the spark. You, uh, I'm the spark. You need to fan the flames. Yeah, and that's it. So he takes off, and so then they all get fighting. And I was like, going, but what can Ryan do? He hasn't got any powers. No, he was just like swinging wildly at these things, wasn't he? And just kind of yeah. going, come here, I'm going to get you, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and you just got this cool montage of fight sequences of them all flipping and fighting and shooting it's lasers. All their powers, and, yeah, things. fighting all these shadow demons, and they just kept coming and kept coming. And then you saw Ollie up on top of this like mountain thing, mm -hmm. and he was going to use his powers, and then the monitor appeared. And yes. he's confronted him and is basically like, you can't stop this. It's fruitless. And he's like, I'm more powerful than you. And Oliver's kind of like, we'll see about that sort of thing. And he said, you have failed this universe. Yeah, because they, yeah, they had this exchange where they were shooting their powers at each other. And it was yeah. this big beam of backwards and forwards, like antimatter versus Ollie's whatever it is, like magical powers or whatever. Yeah. And then when he did that final push and pushed back against him, he went, you have failed this universe. And then he destroyed him, and then all the shadow demons blew up. And then he looked upwards and he fired the energy beam up into the sky. Yeah. And then they're like, he's doing it, but it's not. And then he's like, working. it's not quite working. So what Lex do we do? has an what idea. Do do? Yes. And he pulled out the page that he still had, didn't he? Yeah. And he said he had to focus all, on all the meanings of the paragons at it. They yeah. Have to think of all the hope in all the, in all the things, of all their meanings. At whatever it was going on in the sky, wasn't it? It's like, this is why you are, we are the Paragons, because each one of us holds a component that is key to, like, life in the universe. You know, yeah, love, strength, hope, intelligence, humanity, you know, all this kind of stuff. So that's why we were picked. So we now need mm. to focus our minds and think about the concept of what we are and, and channel that towards Ollie to help him to do this. Um, that's what he meant about, I'll be the spark, you fan the flames. Yeah, yeah. So then they all stood in a line. And this is the one thing I did find was the, the bit that was a bit crappy, was that instead of it being some big epic thing where you saw this energy coming out of them or whatever, they all just stood and stared very intently yeah. at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was a bit meh. But it worked anyway. And then there was a big explosion and the light went out and they were like, no. And Sarah's like, get me there now. So um, Barry whisked her up to the top of the mountain. And Ollie was laid on the floor. And this was it. Yeah. And he put it, he said, it's almost, the new universe is being created and it's almost time. Mm. I, and then I thought, and is he like, gone? Is he going to die? And he then, told yep. them to look up and they looked up and they could see the creation of everything happening above them. And yeah. then, then it was really sad, and and Barry was like trying not to like didn't want to lose Oliver again, and he had his final speech, and he talked about them being the best that they are, and that basically it was quite nice as well because it's like Sarah was the person that he started this whole thing out with. It was yeah. her and him on the gambit in the beginning, and Barry and just, yeah. was the first hero like that he took under his wing in that way and that like yeah. created the rest of the Arrowverse. Everything that came afterwards came yeah. from that initial meeting with Barry Allen, you know, and, and him becoming his like mentor and his best friend and stuff like that. So it was quite nice that it was those two were with him. Mm. I mean, there's part of me that is still kind of like, but is he really gone? Because well, I, I look at it now that his 
the spectre might have left him and you know obviously, you know the one that they left mm. on where's that place called again purgatory yeah so maybe that part's gone off him and the, the real him is still there mm. do you know what i mean because he had to take that form didn't it it was his problem, yeah. but he was the host for the is it the spectre that's died yeah and he's, he's mm. still alive i don't know Unless it were, or unless it was the la- that was the last part of Oliver Queen, and now he will just be the spectre going forward. He might have Oliver's memory, but he won't be Oliver Queen. Whereas this was because there was that bit earlier on when Barry was like Oliver, and he was like yes and no, and then he was like yeah. later on he said to him, "I am Oliver, like I'm still Oliver, but like maybe now it's like he's not Oliver ever. You know, he will have Oliver's memories and knowledge." but he won't be Oliver. He will be the Spectre. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just felt like you became a cosmic being and now you're dead. So it's like, mm. I don't know. I think they'd, they'd be able to find a comic booky way to bring him back in the future to, for a cameo, you know, for another, if they do a crossover or whatever, then they could bring him in just for one episode or two episodes or something. Mm. I mean, because it also makes you wonder what it means for the end of Arrow because we've still got a couple of episodes of Arrow left yet. True. So, like, how is it all going to end if he's not in it? Unless, like, the final episode is going to be, like, a flashbacks and memories and a funeral and this, that, and the other and, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, it was... Yeah. I will say, though, I, I did feel sad. It was sad because it was like, this is final. This is the final death now. But it wasn't quite as impactful to me as when he died in the first episode because no. that came as a shock and that was really emotional you know like Barry was in floods of tears and things like that and it was just that to me that got to me more emotionally than this one did mm. because of the fact we've already seen him die once do you know what I mean yeah yeah I get you so it didn't quite carry the same weight I mean it was still like a big moment and it was like this is his proper final goodbye but it didn't quite have the same emotional connection to me as the first time did no but yeah, so then that was that was that. That was like how it yeah. ended, wasn't it? It like just zoomed out and showed everything exploding in the sky and all of the and then there was like a flash of light and everything went white and then that was the end of the episode. Yeah. So then we moved on to I suppose you could see this as like the 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 epilogue. Yeah. So like effectively Crisis was four episodes. And then the fifth episode is like the epilogue. It's the wrapping up. It's the loose ends. It's the... Aftermath. Aftermath, yeah. That's the word. Yeah. So we, although it was the fifth part of this crossover, it was also kind of like the mopping up of everything. So mm. the, the crossover effectively ended at the end of that episode of Arrow. Mm. So, yeah. So then we, we get <laughs> a little bit of a weird thing with the white light again and voices talking about the birthing the universe and stuff like that. And then you get Kara waking up on her sofa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she so, thought she where, where, where she it all, didn't she? Yeah, because Alex walks in and she's like, Alex, you're here. And she's like, yeah, you okay? <laughs> and she's like, all this stuff that happened. And, stuff, and she's like, oh, is that you fell asleep watching that on the TV? And she's like, wait, what? You don't remember? And it's like, what do you mean? You know, I don't understand what's happening sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, she was a bit confused, wasn't she? She was very disorientated, wasn't she? And uh, was it was it then when Alex said she thinks she's gone a bit crazy, didn't she? Yeah. Alex? And was it uh, Nia contacted her to say, "Hurry up, you, you're going to be late. Where are you? We got we got beer for the the award ceremony." Yes, and she's like, "Oh right, yeah, okay, I'll get there as soon as I can." <laughs> and it was something to do. Was it the Nobel Peace the Prize? Nobel Peace or Prize. <laughs> <laughs> so they go there as all these journalists and stuff like that and then she's like who are we here for and she's like come on you must know it's been on all the on the news and everything this is a big deal and she's like okay and they're like ladies and gentlemen we're very proud to announce the recipient of this year's Nobel Peace prize he's done so much for humanity and the world in general a kind and benevolent man please give a huge welcome to lex luther <laughs> 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 and Supergirl's like, girl's what? like, what's going on? And and Nia's going, he's the best guy. He's oh, no. the boss. And then we realised he owned the company and he's Luther Corp. Yep, he basically like, no. owns like <laughs> he owns Catco, and as we saw later, he owns the DEO as well. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's like, oh my God. So he's Supergirl's boss and <laughs> everybody loves him. Yeah. He's like a hero, you know, and he's like, I might not be a hero in the conventional sense. I don't have superpowers. I'm not from another planet, but I try and do my best to help humanity <laughs> and all that, you know, and he's given this really sincere speech about, I know, but I don't ask for accolades. I don't do this for the applause and for the rewards. I do this to try and be a good person. And this, and you're like, what's happening? Well, it's like some kind of I mean, weird bizarro. Dropped on his head or something. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know. obviously, we can say at this point that we never get a clarification of, of why this is the case in the episode. But I think no. it's very clear Lex, once again, gamed the system and, and rewrote, probably again in the Book of Destiny, to give himself this, this new reality. So, like, yeah. in this new universe that was created by Oliver Queen's sacrifice... We got Lex Luthor giving himself a do-over and creating <laughs> the, himself the life a hero. That he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that in itself is intriguing going forward. Yeah. Like with Supergirl specifically, of like what this means now in terms of Lex Luthor being her boss and owning all the companies she works for and things like that. Mm. So I'm really excited to see the the storytelling in Supergirl now now this is all done and dusted mm. so yes that then was the ha- first big thing now John was it was a bit with John and he remembers he, did he turn up at the thing and tell her that she's got a something was going on in uh, there was something she had to deal with no 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 not yet wasn't then the thing about after the award ceremony there was a thing to do with the the DEO she had to go to work and Supergirl was needed I thought John was there before because I wrote down few at least John remembers and then the weather witch thing happened oh yeah maybe he met up with Supergirl first and he said to her about we remember because we're paragons because she was like I thought it was a dream and stuff and he's like no it really happened and she's like why does nobody seem to know and he's like because for them, this is the way, you know, this is reality. Anyone that wasn't a paragon, they won't remember what happened. But yeah, because they existed outside of all this and then saw the rebirth of the universe from the outside, they yeah. retain all the memories of everything. And she's like, okay. And then there was a, the emergency. There's something going on at the dock. Now, this again, yeah. this was another, there were two references here because I may as well talk about both of them now. I won't talk yeah. about the the actual other scene, but... There were two places where battles happened in this episode, and they were both, okay. I think they were both docks. Right. I think both of them were docks, and they were both named after people. Right. There was an incident going on at, yeah, Gardner Pier. Right. Was that there was something going on? There was an incident happening at Gardner Pier. Uh, Gardner okay. Fox was the co writer of The Flash, episode one, two, three, The Flash of Two Worlds which is where Barry Allen first met the other version of The Flash, which introduced the concept that there was a multiverse in the DC Ah. comics. So he was the person that wrote that comic, so that's why the place was named after him. And later on, when we had the other big battle that happened, it took place at somewhere called Perez Landing. Okay. And this was because George Perez was the artist and co-creator of the Crisis on Infinite Earths comic. Oh, wow. Well, that's nice to get their name in there then. Mmm. Mmm, clever. So, yeah, so that was that. So that was quite cool that they referenced two people from the comic book world that were integral to concepts or things that come about during this crossover. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. So, so then, yeah, she gets called to the docks and she goes there and there's a woman there and, and I recognized her. I was like, wait, I've seen this character like... before. <laughs> But Cara yeah, didn't thinking, know who she was. <laughs> and bit, yeah, at the time, I was thinking, I know who she is. I'm sure they sorted that one out mm. previously, hadn't they? Yeah. I think they, and then obviously then Barry appears, and it probably, she, she's from his earth. And he goes, this is one of mine. And she's like, sorry about oh. this one of mine. And then she's like, wait, what? And then she's like, what are you doing on my earth? And then he's like, your earth? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like, well, this is my earth I'm like no it's not this is my earth and then and this old man came over and asked him for autographs and he was like oh i love you guys i love it when you guys are together <laughs> and they're like wait hold on a second and he's like who are you and he's like oh my name's marv and they're like marv do you see us together often 
And he's like, well, yeah, you know, sometimes there's also a legend or the green arrows with you or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, but yeah, you guys team up quite often. And they're like, so this is normal to see us together. And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, can you sign this and make it out to Marv? And he hands them a picture of them two together. And they're like, uh, what's going on? Why is this normal? It appears that they're on, they've been on the same earth since forever, basically. <laughs> and again, this was another important cameo because that old man was Marv Wolfman, who was the original creator of the Crisis on Infinite Earths comic. Oh, right. So the guy that was name checked in a place was the co-creator, but this is the guy that actually created it. Mm. And he's seen as one of the greatest writers in comic book history. So that was really nice that they had him in. And apparently I've also found out since that he helped co-write the final ep like episode four. He was a part of writing that one that we've just discussed. Oh, okay. So that cool. was really nice to have him in. I mean, it's like in a way, it's almost like when in Marvel have Stan Lee show up. Yeah. So it was like that. It's like, well, this guy, the crisis storyline doesn't, it wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for him creating it. So it was quite nice to have him show up and be like a fan be quite cool of those <laughs> characters and stuff. Yeah, so that was quite nice. So yeah, so then they're like, right, so this is normal, like that we are on the same earth together. So yeah. that and was then, rather confusing. <laughs> then we had a little tiny snippet where we had some guys down in the sewers mm -hmm. and they found wells in the sewers and there was no door on the wall. The wall was just normal. Yeah. It's like... But we didn't see any more of that for a bit, did we? No. But that that we threw that in. So, oh right, he's appeared back in the this world as well. Mm -hmm. Then we had Sarah looking a bit down in the dumps, and she found Ray at the bar they were they were before the crisis. Yeah, because she was in an alleyway, and she's like, "Where the hell am?" I? And she's like, "How the hell am oh, I no. back here?" And she's like, "All right, so what, she was lost, like here? I said." Did yeah, she? and then she wandered yeah, so to the bar. the bar, and she saw Ray, and and Ray was they... like, "I am." Um, and he's like, she's like, Ray? And she's like, yeah, I'm here, just like you told me to be here to meet you. And she's like, I did. And he's like, are you okay, boss? And she's like, I don't know. And then John showed up and was like, maybe I can shed some light onto this. Before that, he says, was there a crossover? Were we invited? Did we win? Yeah, oh, yeah, and that's John right, yeah. Up. Because he didn't know anything. Yeah, because she was like, so we, everything was, is okay and back to normal. And he's like, what are you talking about? And then he's like, wait, was there a crossover? Yeah. And then John showed up and was like, maybe I can shed some light onto this. And then he, he put his touched hand Ray's his head. head and Ray saw everything. And Ray was like, oh, my God, we did this and that happened. And there was a super me. Mm. <laughs> so he's like the bit where he saw the Brandon Ralph yeah. man and stuff. And he was like, whoa, that all really happened. And it's like, yeah, that happened. Uh, I mean, this was a reoccurring th theme throughout the episode as well, was John showing up and like giving everybody their memories back of like everything that had happened. Yeah. That was that. Yeah, then Sarah went back to the uh, arrow lair. And yeah. uh, there, there was no uh, arrow suit in the suitcase thing. This bit was the sad bit for me. This is the bit yeah, that made diggle. me cry again was because, yeah, she's calling Ollie and all this lot and then saw the suit wasn't miss was missing. And then Diggle and Dinah and, uh, oh, what's his name again? Rene. Rene, yes, come out and... They're like, he's not here. And she's like, but everything. And they're like, um, oh, yeah. And then he's, she's like, you know everything that happened. And Renee's like, uh, Marsh and John came by and, and um, gave us a memory jolt. Yeah. And Marsh and, and John. Diggle, <laughs> yeah, Marsh and John. But yeah, and poor Diggle. Poor Diggle, it, felt, it failed him. Because twice. Both times he died, he wasn't there. Like he told him he would be. Yeah. And I just, that bit got to me because I was just like, and he's like, he was my best friend, Sarah. And he's like, I wasn't there for him either time and all this. Stuff. I let him down. I failed him and stuff like that. And I was like, mm. oh, because he's such a stoic, strong bloke normally, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so to see him like in tears like that was just like, oh, bless him. You know, that was, I know, that was the sad bit. Yeah. And then the other two were really sad as well. And then they said that, um, oh, yeah. And also, well, they, they were on about like looking for him and like maybe Felicity can find him. And they're like, no, they, they searched. She searched. She searched the whole world and there was yeah. nothing. And she's like, but what about the spectre? He became the spectre. Maybe you need to look at that. And they're like, Sarah, he's not here. Yeah. We're not going to find him. And then he said, and then he went, Oliver's gone, didn't he? Yeah. And it's like, oh, so that's, so everything got fixed, but he's not part they lost, of this. They lost, you know, no, yeah. he didn't come back. So then we went to Central City and John had gone to Star Labs to update Caitlin with his little memory 
Joel. Oh, and, and he got very cross, didn't he? And Wells was in the building. She was looking after him because he'd also been taken there. Because mm. that's the sewers were connected to Star Labs, wasn't they? Yeah. And, it, and he, was going, he was getting really angry because he said it's his fault. And then, yeah, because he just, he woke up, didn't he, around that point? Yeah. And he's like, what's going on? And like that. And he was like, this is you. You did this. Everything that's happened was because of you and your stupidity and this, that, and the other. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, this is what I'm talking And he really, like, forcibly just, like, grabbed him and, like, made yeah. him remember everything. And then he was like, and then he fell over, didn't he? And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. It is all my fault. Mm. And it was like, wow. And, like, yeah, that was really extreme, that whole bit. Because yeah, he opened the door to it, didn't he? Because it yeah. of him opened the door to the anti monitor because he thought it was the monitor. Mm -hmm. so he got tricked. That's what started it all in the first place. Yeah. It was like, ooh. So, uh, was there anyone else that got filled in? Um, Sarah, I remember Sarah contacted the Wave Rider and spoke to. Um, um, I can't believe that we've forgotten the character names. It was Nate. Nate was there, and then the yeah. girlfriend. Um, <gasps> What's the girlfriend called that's in charge of the Time Bureau? Can't remember her name. Well, she was there anyway, so them two, mm. and she she reached out and contacted them, didn't she? And then there was a weird disturbance. So they all got their memories back. Yeah, Barry and Cara had gone to the den, the Bar the Arrow Cave place. Yeah, and obviously re they realised Ollie never made it, mm. and then there was an alert. Hmm. <laughs> to say that there was something happening downtown so they all head downtown and downtown there was a book signing going on wasn't there yeah <laughs> yeah mick signing his book rebecca black <laughs> <laughs> rebecca was signing his books and there's this old so woman funny. and she's like i'm such a big fan of yours i'm so glad to finally meet you um rebecca should I call you Rebecca? And he's like, sure, why not? Yeah, oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sign this for me? Yeah. And he like wrote something. And he's like, as he signed it, Rebecca, there was a jolt. And he's like, Ugh. and you're like, what's going on outside? And then in a real kind of Ghostbusters sort of Yeah, but moment, this is where. <laughs> yeah. And he, he looked out and he went, furball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Bebo from. From uh, the Legends thing had come back and it is huge. Yep. That was when they were talking to the Wave Rider because they even said something and it and then they said, What another crossover? Yeah, and then and they were like, Did they abduct you? Did they take you against your will? Why weren't we involved in all of this? And she's like, It's no time for this now. Bebo's here. And they're like, That shouldn't be possible. It should only be there through the talisman and stuff. And and then they mentioned the guy, the one that took uh, that got brought into it at the end of last season of Legends, the brother that shouldn't have existed. Yeah. And they were on it because obviously he's the one with the talisman. And they're like, he's still got it. So the Bebo shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be possible. Well, he's here and he's rampaging through the city. And then the bit with Ray taking a selfie of him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's supposed to be fighting him. He's like, hang on. I got a picture. <laughs> there's loads of crossover jokes, wasn't there? Yeah, and loads when of crossover fight, jokes. I was talking about this Bebo thing. And I presume when Pickle says, I'm never going to let my kids watch it again, that program again. Yeah. Does he mean the program with Bebo on? After mm -hmm. seeing the giant Bebo. Yeah. yeah. So Batgirl was there as well. Yeah, she showed up and they're like, you're here. And then Kara looked really happy. And she went, you're here too? Like that. And then yeah. she went, I mean, uh, we need to focus on this sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, 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 they were trying to work out why it was there. And then they decided it, was to, it must have been a diversion of something else that was going on. Because it wasn't I giving off the right energy reading. No, no. So they're like, wait, so this is something to keep us occupied while something else happens and it was yeah. and it was basically a simple thing it was this guy who again is, is a reference to an old dc comics character mm. called sargon the sorcerer yeah and he was like finally sargon's day has come and he was robbing a bank yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he had created this version of bebo to keep the heroes distracted so he could rob a bank yeah um, but and they took him out. And him. Then, yeah, Sarah, because she went, uh, she was really annoyed and she was like, Bebo is off limits. And she like punched him in the face. <laughs> and then Bebo was just disintegrated. Bebo gone bye bye. And he turned into like mush, just like yeah. Bebo gone bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, now you know it's a Legends episode because everything's wacky. Yeah, nothing's yeah, like, like 
normal. <laughs> yeah, it was all weird and funny and, you know, Bebo and all the little crossover jokes they kept making and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, this mm. is really a, a, a Legends episode. And because of all that, because they'd done all that, they're all together again. Yeah. Because they, like, they'd all literally met each other. Mm-hmm. They were having celebration drinks. Yeah. Back at, where were they? At the Arrow Cave. Oh, the Arrow Cave. And they were like toasting Oliver and stuff. And then that's when the bit, Sarah obviously stepped out and Barry realized she'd gone and came looking for her. And Mm. she was like, how did you find me? And he was like, did you feel that gust of wind a moment ago? And she was like, yeah. And he was like, that was me tracing the whole city to see if I could find you. Yeah. And and she's like about that. And she said, you see that tree over there? And she said, I used to climb that tree with my sister. And she said, when we were young, and then she said, everything's changed now. And she said, now with Ollie gone, and she said, basically, it's like, that's the last connection to my past. Her dad's gone, her sister's gone, and now, like, her oldest friend, best friend, lover, you know, Mm. whatever, he's gone as well. And it's like, you know, I've got nothing. There's nothing here for me anymore. There's no family. There's no nothing to keep me rooted. And then that was when Barry was basically like, you've got us. You've got the legends. You've got, you know... It's going to be different now. The world's going to be different. Everything's going to be different. But you've still got people that care about you and mm. you still belong with with us sort of thing. So, yeah, that was quite a nice little moment between basically what are now the two leaders of this world we're in. Yeah. Because obviously she's the captain of the Wave Rider and, and Barry has now basically had to take the, the mantle from Oliver, hasn't he? He's now like like the boss, I suppose. Yeah. So yeah, that was a nice little moment of of the characters all together, and then crisis kicked off again because uh, Nash. There's been a surge of antimatter. Yes, yeah, so and Nash had the readings and stuff, and he was like, "They're the same as before," and they're like, mm. "How is that possible?" And he's like, "I don't know, but it's not over. In fact, it seems like it's beginning all over again." Yeah, and you're like, and "Oh no!" The shadow demons are back. And they were coming for the Paragons. They were trying to wipe out the Paragons. Because obviously they were all there, but Ryan had gone home, hadn't he, to see his little baby? Yeah. And they, and they had to go and rescue him, didn't they, because they were trying to get him? Because that was when they, they had that moment, didn't they, where they were like, the, Parag- the Paragons are being targeted, and then it was Sarah, wasn't it? And she went, Ryan, <laughs> like, Ryan's in danger. And then you get to see him, like, running into the bedroom with his baby and trying to oh. hide, and the demon's coming for him. And then just in the nick of time... Sarah shows up and takes it out and he's like, Sarah. And he's like, we're here to save you. And it's not over. We need you and stuff like that. So yeah. Like, oh, no. And we realize the anti-monitor is still alive. Mm. So like, he somehow um, survived. And again, this is again from the comics, like, because they never explained it, did they? They never explained no. after Ollie's sacrifice and everything, how the anti-monitor is still there. But that's another thing in the comics. Mm. He shows up again at the end, when the heroes think they've won, he shows up again with no explanation as to how he survived. So as much as you might get people that will go, oh, plot hole, they didn't explain it or whatever. And it's like, because they weren't meant to, because it was never explained in the comics either. Uh, So this is them being accurate to the story that you don't get an explanation for why the anti-monitor was able to show back up again. I mean, it it could be... What? No, carry on. I was just going to say, it could be as simple as like, anti-matter exists anyway so it might be that thing of like wherever there's antimatter there can always be the anti-monitor type thing yeah it's true what were you when they i was saying the joke the thing with mick saying chuck him into the sun (laughs) yeah oh yeah that's a great idea throw him into the sun where he's made of antimatter and it's going to cause this to happen and it will cause the collapse of the whole universe yeah great idea genius and i was like (laughs) i love the bit with him you know as well when they were having drinks yeah and the drinks are being poured and he had his glass and he went what is that? And he's like, uh, alcohol? And he's like, yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> he only drinks beer. So he's yeah. like, he's not familiar with champagne. Bo- or it was champagne. He, drank, he had the bottle though, didn't he? Didn't have yeah. Glass. He drank it from the bottle. <laughs> 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 yeah, so they decided they needed to disable his form. Yes. And they like... send him to the atoms. Atom... I like to call it the Atomverse, the Microverse. Oh, that's The Microverse. Might have some trademark issues because Microverse is is Marvel. So that's why the joke when he sort of said, might be a few trademark issues with that. Ah, right. (laughs) But it's interesting because he's the one that's going to take over from him, isn't he? Yes. So So they're working together, yeah. 
Yeah, there's loads of those things there, wasn't there? Yeah, there was just swarms of them. And they were like, we need to, again, break up our forces. We need to defend key places. So some of us need to stay here at Star Labs to defend work on this thing and yeah some need to stay and work on this this device that's gonna shrink the anti-monitor and send him into like the microverse and some of us need to stay here to protect them from these the shadow demons and the yeah. rest of us need to get out there and fight them you know to prevent them from doing damage in the city yeah so they split their forces and went off to to do that so then you got like battle scenes and that was the thing where i said about the the, the pia perez landing was where this big battle happened. You, John, look. Yeah, John's got his, again, comic book accurate <laughs> costume, I think, as far as I'm aware now. And he was like, well, new world, new costume or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Frost was there. Yeah, it was good because it allowed some of the heroes that hadn't really played a part in the big battle in the last one were able to be involved in this one. Diggle and Dinah and... Rene and uh, Killer Frost, and you know, they were all able to be a part of it, weren't they? Yeah, so they went off to fight outside. Yeah. And then they, what are those things got in the Star Labs? And, and who you, appeared? Well, you had Rory and Killer Frost, and they were having, and it was funny because he was like, um, hey, it's been a while, Frosty. How are you doing? And all this kind of stuff. You're looking good. And she's like, hey, Mick, nice to see you too. And, and then this thing came around the corner, and it's like, um, would you? He was like, ladies first. And she's like, age before beauty. And he sort of went, <laughs> <laughs> and then before they had a chance to do anything, this bolt of lightning came from behind them. Yeah. And it was black lightning. Yay. So they, they brought it back as well. And he but said yeah, again, yeah. he made a reference to the fact that John came and like gave, like, um, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. John came and reminded him of everything as well. Yeah. And then it, the little exchange between him and Rory was funny. He called him Sparkles. <laughs> and he was like, call me Sparkles again, like that. And then he went, mm. And then he was like, where are you supposed to be from? And he's like, I'm from Freeland, which obviously now is also here. So yeah. interesting. So, yeah. So the fact that he had to have his memory jolted because he was one of the people that got wiped out. But that, that was pretty cool. So then you get mm. to see Black Lightning, Killer Frost and Heat Wave all working together to protect the lab from these demon things. Yeah. And then you got back out on the pier place. They're all fighting away. And then the spectre, the ghost things all started swirling together. And I thought to begin with, I was like, oh, they're creating some kind of weird tornado or something. But instead, oh. they became the anti-monitor, didn't they? You got bigger and bigger. Well, yeah. He had, well, first he had his exposition about basically, I'm going to beat all of you. You can't stop me. You know, you couldn't stop me before. You're not even the sacrifice of your friend couldn't stop me, which got Sarah's hackles up on her back. And he's like, it was all a waste. That sacrifice was for nothing. I'm just going to do it all over again. And then, mm. yeah, then he grew. And again, that's from the comics. He he gets bigger in size and they have to battle this humongous version. And I thought that looked quite, pretty good. You know, the, the effects were pretty good on that with mm. them all flying around him. And, you know, um, what did. Supergirl say team did she just call them like team air or something like that yeah yeah or team airborne or something like that like the flying heroes and yeah. then you had the ones on the ground or trying to like hack his feet and all of this sort of stuff yeah and they were just basically trying to battle him as long as they could until this device was ready and you saw that they were they were kind of struggling to get it put together weren't they because they were like we need this you need to hurry up and they were like but we can't get it together quickly and it's like Barry <laughs> and he had superman he grabbed superman didn't he who did the big molotov man had him in his hands oh uh, yeah so i thought you meant barry grabbed him because i said about they called barry oh, back sorry. to the lab didn't they because <laughs> yeah because they called barry because they said they needed somebody quick to help build the bomb yeah oh that was so funny wasn't he saying but being really careful about what you're doing he went it's all right yeah he's like ray you're with me and he's and then was it before that he said about the button and he went, don't touch it yet. <laughs> and like, oh, oh, this button? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then he took Ray with him. Um, yeah. And then in the meantime, yeah, that was the bit then when they're flying around him and they're shooting lasers at him and stuff. And then the monitor, anti-monitor reaches out and grabs um, Superman and is crushing him. And Kara's yeah. like flying and flying towards him and trying to save him. She and, got really mad, didn't she? Yeah. And then... Arrow, um, Arrow, Ray. Um, Flash and Ray showed it, and Ray was there in his suit, and he's like, "It's okay, I got this, Supergirl." And he's like, "Superman, I've got you." And he like shot him with his shrink ray, so then he could slip through mm -hmm. the grasp of the anti monitor. 
And then yeah. they were able to throw the bomb at him and he was like, no. And then it worked and they just went, rit, 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 disappeared and he was just gone. And there was a very tidy Superman. Yeah, and they were like, where's Clark? And he's like, I'm here. And he's like, Clark? And he's like, oh, hold on a minute, Superman. Let me just get you back to normal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that was, that was so, so funny. funny. So, yeah, so now they've they vanquished the monitor, the anti-monitor again. For, well, for now, anyway, he's been sent into the, the Atomverse. Maybe he'll be resurrected one day. I don't know. Because he's not dead. He's just been shrunk down. He's just continually right. shrinking. So... That was that. So then everybody like was celebrate. Yay, we've done all this and stuff. So the president's speech. Yes, talking about the heroes and acknowledging the identity of Oliver Queen as the Green Arrow, who Mm -hmm. then was the Spectre, and he sacrificed his life to save us all. And and basically, like, all of this went on and nobody knew about it. It's like Mm -hmm. the world now is acknowledging and thankful for costumed heroes, whereas we've seen over the years there's been lots of ups and downs of like their vigilantes their their outlaws they're you know going against the law they're this that and the other only some of them are recognized by the governments as being heroes while others are seen as being renegades but this was the mm. president basically saying all of them yeah. all of them that were involved in this all helped and you kept you got different things then you got kate was on the oh, sofa at supergirl's the, house with cara yeah, had, and stuff watching it kate, and, yeah and we had the diggles and both kids yeah so Sa- sarah the kid that got disappeared during the Flashpoint storyline has been returned. Yeah, so they got the boy and the girl. And so while this broadcast is going on, you see Superman flying around and he yeah. gets a call from Lois to say, you need to come back to Metropolis. There's a problem with the boys. Yes. The S, S at the end. There's two. They've yes. got two kids now. Yes. So that was another change. That was like, oh, yeah. okay. That's clearly going to be something that's going to factor into this new um, Superman show that yeah. they're bringing out. Because that, that's another thing that's coming is obviously the Superman TV show. So that'll probably be a plot point in that of them having two boys now. So, yeah, you got all these little bits and all the different characters. Um, you had two was in the bar. Sarah Mick, and Mick. Sarah, Ray, Mick and Dana. And Road yeah, Dog. Yeah, that's right. And Road Dog. Road Dog. <laughs> Rene. Rene. <laughs> Throughout the whole thing, you couldn't remember his name. And I wrote, I the only time I wrote his name now, I wrote Road Dog. <laughs> Wild Dog. Rene. Rene. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they were all there and they were all watching it. And that, what was interesting as well it was Channel 52 was the, the news channel, which is, again, referenced because... 52 the universes in uh, uh, yes. the comics the 50, you know the new 52 and all that kind of stuff so that was all pretty cool and she basically then had a moment of silence to remember the sacrifice oliver queen gave that so that all of us could live yeah. and that was quite nice and it did and it was like a minute silence in the program where it just cut between all the different characters bowing their heads and stuff yeah and acknowledging his legacy and then mm. then we got a very interesting ending bit Yes. So we had all these different Earths, didn't we? No, wait. Oh, yeah, no, that bit happened first, didn't it? It was that bit and then the next bit happened. Yeah, Yeah, sorry, I thought... That's right, yeah, so... Earth 2, Earth 12, Earth 19. You had a voiceover from Oliver again saying about the, the multiverse and about how on that day the multiverse died, mm. but then creation was reborn and the multiverse was reborn with it. So unlike the comics, they haven't got rid of everything. They seem to have scaled it back a little bit and they've made some changes, but they haven't wiped out everything like they did in the comics. So they've returned the multiverse to a point, but it's slightly different because we've now got obviously um, a new Earth 2. So Earth 2 was destroyed, but there's now a new Earth 2. And that Earth 2 is home to Stargirl. Yeah, and her best. band of heroes. So right. I mentioned earlier on that we're getting a Stargirl TV series. So we got to see her and we got to see her stepdad, who's the, the big robot that was in it. Mm. And we also got to see um, our man and I can't remember what the other character's called, but um, the bunch of characters that are from her show. Right. And then we got Swamp Thing was another Earth. We then got Doom Patrol was another Earth. We got Titans, which was another Earth. So that was interesting that they're all on different Earths now. Because, like, Doom Patrol showed up in Titans 
In the first oh. season of Titans, that's when we met Doom Patrol, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But now they're on a separate Earth from them. Okay. Um, and then we also got a nice little Christopher Reeves homage with Brandon Routh, Superman, Earth-96, yep. flying past the Earth like they used to do in the old Superman movies. Yeah. Looking very happy. So he got his happy ending. So that was pretty cool. And then we got Earth Prime. Yeah. So this Earth now, the home of Supergirl and the Legends and the Flash team and the Arrow team and Black Lightning and all these other, whoever else we haven't been shown yet, they are now all on the same planet. Yeah. So that's what the exciting thing is going forward now. What does this mean for all the shows? Mm. You know, what does it mean for Black Lightning now when he returns to his show, but now Freeland is now part of this world where there are supermen and batwomen and flashes and things like this. Time travelers. Yeah, which didn't really exist in Mm. his Earth that he came from before, you know? Yeah. And the fact that he knows everything, but his family don't know everything that happened. No. So that that's going to be interesting. And the same with, like, now that National City is now part of this Earth Prime, what's it going to mean for crossovers in the future? You know, the, it's going to be a lot easier to do because they're now on the same planet. Yeah. And it, is the, the reality-spanning stuff going to come with the other Earths that they showed at the end? Are they mm-hmm. going to have some of the crossovers with... Oh, and Earth-12, the Green Lanterns. That was the yeah. other thing I said at the beginning. What was that one called? Black Infantry. Or something. The first one they showed. That was the, yeah, that was the, the Green Lantern one. Um, because it was a place in, in space somewhere. Oh, okay. And you saw the big ring, the big, like, symbol, yeah, and there was yeah. all these things flying about, all very space. Yeah, they can use all those Earths and have crossovers with those different yeah. shows now, like Titans and Doom Troll and mm-hmm. Dargo and stuff. But it's cool as well because it means that, like, they introduced all these cameos and all these things during crisis mm. because they were like, it's all part of a multiverse. And then they're like, oh, the multiverse is gone. But they're now saying these things are all still part of the multiverse, though. You know, mm. we acknowledge that these things all exist side by side with the Arrowverse, which then means that from a storytelling perspective, in the future, we may have some kind of crossovers with these different shows. Yeah. And even with the films now, after having that big thing with with the flash from the movies you know yeah. who knows what that could mean in the future as because that's what marvel do marvel have cross-pollination between their shows and their films so yeah, that's true why Ooh. can't dc do exciting it? exciting times yeah very very exciting now new horizons and new beginnings for the arrowverse so then the final bit so the final bit we get our main core heroes don't we mm. yeah um and they are in like a big warehouse place yeah uh, which apparently belong to Star Labs, which Barry owns or something. Yeah. Because he's like, I own this place. And it was Barry, Kara, Sarah, Batwoman, John, Clark, and uh, Black, Lightning. Black Lightning. Yeah. And they're all there, and they had a memorial. And that, like oh, a again, that bit actually made me a bit... I didn't cry, but it made me a little bit emotional again because they had the tribute with the costume, they had the arrow costume, and a few of them said a few words about Oliver. and then. They had, they lit the thing and it was like the uh, the arrow from the opening credits bit with the fi- flaming arrow thing and stuff. Yeah. And it panned out and it was a big arrow, wasn't it? And it was like yeah. an eternal flame. Mm. And it did the dun, 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 like the arrow music. And it was mm. like, oh my God. It just like, this was like, all of this is because of this program. Yeah. Like all of this we have now is thanks to that one program. But yeah, because so, it's tribute to the program that, brought them all into being didn't it, really? mm. it was so nice and it was a real and i love the fact they were all saying things and then jefferson was stood there and he sort of quietly leaned into barry and sort of punched him on the shoulder and sort of went i didn't know oliver queen but i think he was probably a pretty good dude <laughs> <laughs> and, the and, then barry's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they turned round and then Barry was like anyway and they were like how did you get this plan and that's when he said oh it belongs to Star Lab so I own it nobody knows about it um so we can use it you know as a place like as well as this memorial we can use it if we need to get together in the future for any reason and he's like that's not the best part I've got something else to show you Mm. and he goes over to this thing and there's a big blanket or a big sheet sorry and he pulls it off and what did he reveal a big table 
yeah. the special all the chairs at the emblems of all the hero, different heroes. Mm. And even one for Oliver. Yeah, which again made me think mm. we might see him again in some capacity in the future. If I mean, I know it was symbolic as well of like, he might not be with us. Well, that's, but that's what it was there for. That's us. why it was that made in that yeah. particular moment. It was for a tribute rather than anything else, wasn't it? But I think it'll also be at one point he'll be sat in that chair, I reckon. Yeah. But yeah, um, and so basically what they've just done, they've just created the TV version of the Justice League. Because mm. that's what they, and that's that building is the Halls of Justice. That's This is the beginnings of, so I imagine over time this warehouse will get like, you know, refitted and made to look less like a warehouse and more like a like a base of operations. And he was like, yeah. this is a place that we can come together if we ever have problems and we need to work together. And then was it again, Black Lightning said something about like these kind of things happening, like alien invasions and stuff like that. And he's like, they yeah. don't, it's a one-off thing, isn't it? And they all looked at him and he was like, no, really? Like, oh. <laughs> 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 that was quite funny. But yeah, so they've now got, a base so they've now got the the basis of a tv version of the justice league okay it's slightly different to like the comics version and the movie version but it's it's interesting you know so that's gonna you can imagine that's gonna figure into crossovers going forward that place mm, yeah and then we got the weirdest ending mm. because as they're all sat around the table then you hear something they're like what's that noise what was that what is that and then you hear a monkey and then it pans out and pans out and goes to a storage room and there's a crate with the door open and it says that it's something to do with Star Labs. It's a and it says Gleek and there's banana skins everywhere. And mm. then the music plays and it was jaunty music from an old cartoon series that was based on the DC comics called the Super Friends. Ah. Oh. And the Super Friends, what's key about all of this and who Gleek is, because you probably aren't aware, Mum. No. When the Super Friends was on TV many, many moons ago, because it's an old cartoon, they introduced two characters in amongst our well-known characters like Batman and Superman and stuff. They mm. also introduced the Wonder Twins. And okay. the Wonder Twins were based off Donnie and Marie Osman. Oh. <laughs> so they were, they were two characters they created for the cartoon that were basically the Osmans because it was at the height of their popularity. And so they created these two characters who were twins that had, and they had these rings. And then when they put them together, they would go, Wonder Twin powers combine. And they would like combine their powers together. Um, and they had like a comedy sidekick in the Super Friends that was connected to the Wonder Twins, which was this alien, this blue alien monkey called Gleek. Oh. And that music that played at the end, like say it was the theme tune for the Super Friends cartoon. And Gleek is from that. So, oh, okay. And considering this episode was the Legends episode, it makes sense to have a intelligent alien monkey. Because oh, of course, yes. if it's going to fit in anywhere, it will fit perfectly with the Legends of Tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Something that wacky would just go perfectly with everything else they do on that show. Yeah. Now, it yeah. might not be, it might literally have just been a little comical Easter egg to end the show on a fun note. You know, it might not mean anything. They might, we might not see this monkey, or it might feature at one point. They might just have a cameo of this creature. It's not like you know, it might not be in every episode going uh, forward. Well, they say it might just be another thing to throw in that was part. Yeah, of, it was just a yeah. fun little thing to throw in and to have this <laughs> da, 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 sort of ending thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was cool. It was fun, mm. and just so many layers of wow. references and Easter eggs and you know, homages uh, to the, the past and to the history of the TV shows and the movies and the comics and everything. They, I mean, they just, they did a phenomenal job. Yeah. With this Brilliant. crossover, didn't really they? Really good, yeah. It's really exciting. And like you say, now it's just paved the way for a new chapter, hasn't it? Yeah. It just it's makes it. you wonder what now, now what? You know, it's that thing of like, this is in a way, it's a new beginning. mm because we've now got them all on the same earth. So what's that going to mean for the storylines going forward? I mean, the only one that had a sort of ongoing story that hasn't quite finished, though, was um, Black Lightning, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, Supergirl, they, you know, they dealt with their threat sort of thing. They kind of wrapped that up. We said this before when we yeah. going into a crisis. We were like, they wrapped up this storyline and, and Barry dealt with Bloodworks storyline. And, you know, Arrow obviously had its own thing going on. But, like, they and the Legends obviously was finished at that point. So mm. they can start things afresh now, but it's going to be interesting to see 
the the cross pollination now that they're all on the same earth and you know things like that and and will batwoman get any better now it's all part <laughs> of the same thing <laughs> that's the big hope that's the big hope yeah that's the big question going <laughs> is it forward. gonna be worth watching it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah but yeah all in all it's... really really good really enjoyed mm. it yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. It was so, so enjoyable. And I mean, I know you've just listened to us talk about this all, but it's still something that's worth watching. Just oh, yeah, because we've, it it, we've only just condensed what we see because it's we couldn't really, if we talked about it in proper, proper depth, it would take us longer. Because I'm sure so there's, bit, yeah, there's things we've missed and stuff. Yeah. But... And, that, and obviously, yeah, it's worth and maybe watching them, like binge watch them, one, two, three, four. Like then it all yeah. makes sense, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's really good. I hope you enjoyed listening. For me, I would say this is something that I would like to own on like Blu-ray or something because I'm sure they'll release it. They'll release it yeah. like now it's all done. They'll release this special all on one disc, you know, like as a mm -hmm. I, I would happily sit and watch it again. Yeah, me too. Because it was it's so good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I thought that the other day. I thought, oh, I wish I'd had time to sit and watch all of it leading up to the last two. You know, watch the other two before the other two, so that and like watch it all together. Yeah. See, how, how, like how it, then you don't think about the breaks in between, do you? Flows really well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good indeed. So, looking forward to this week's. Yes. See what next week's. Obviously, see the programs that come back. Mm -hmm. How that how that's impacted on them as well. Yeah. Because obviously we've got three of them next week, haven't we? Yeah. So, woo -hoo, look forward to listening to that. Mm, yes, it's a new dawn and a new day with new things to come. Like we saw the obviously the the little bits of you know, as well as obviously Titans and Doom Patrol and stuff. You've got the the Green Lantern show is coming. You've got the Star Girl show is coming. You know, and anything else that might be coming in the future. So it's and the the new Superman show that's going to be coming down the line. Oh. <laughs> There's no sign of this Arrowverse slowing down. No. And then, and then we've got obviously the the next episode of Arrow we've got is that what they call the backdoor pilot. It's um Green Arrow and the Canaries. So mm. this is going to be the thing that will determine whether or not this actually becomes a series. Because there's still no that hasn't apparently hasn't been defined for sure yet whether this show with Mia as the lead character as the Green Arrow and stuff is actually going to happen. Okay, it's apparently their plan, but it's still got to be commissioned yet. So I think a lot of it will go down to how well this episode does um, in terms of how it's received and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but in a way, part of me thinks, I kind of hope it doesn't. Yeah, I want it just to be finished. As, when they finish it, they finish it. And then we maybe see I, some of the other characters show up in the other show. Yeah, because I think it's just, it would just take away all the good that they've done, how they've done the resolve. Yeah. Again. Sometimes it just uh, it doesn't know. You know what I'm like, though. I'm a tickler for when they try and make money out of something again and try and stretch things. Yeah. I just think, no, why do you need to do that? Mm. So we'll see. We will indeed. But yes, that's that's all things to talk about for next week. So, yep. well, not, yeah, no, that is because, yeah, we'll have seen our road by then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, maybe it's not. No, it is. So that's it. So. What did you think of Crisis? Did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? Did you just listen to our review? And what did you think? Were you excited by our review and talking about all these cameos and Easter eggs and things like that? Let us know in the comments. Um, and then that way we can mention them on next week's show, which would be cool. And also hit that thumbs up button and leave us a like if you enjoyed this. And hopefully the, those of you listening on the audio platforms, there will be means for you to like review us and and you know give us your feedback at some point i'm still trying to get that sorted because the stuff isn't working properly for it so you can also just pop over to my twitter or you can pop over to my um youtube channel and leave a comment on there even if you've just listened to the audio only version because feedback is important and we love to know what you guys think and you know whether you've got theories or questions or whatever so Two fronts, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on the MP3 version of the podcast, we'd love to hear from you. And subscribe to the channel as well. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit that button and click the bell and do all of that kind of stuff so you stay notified of when things go up. 
I've got lots of things going at the moment and I've got lots more things planned for this coming year. So if you want to be a part of that, then you know what to do. Also check out the description box and in there you will find links to my Twitter. You'll find the link to the merch shop, the links to the donation mediums and the link to Green Man Gaming, which I mentioned all at the beginning of the podcast. So I won't go over them again. Yes. Oh, and the in case you're listening and you are planning on going to find the podcast in the future. So pod must just search that. And if you go into the TV and film section, talking TV with my mum is in there. And also if you go to shows dot acast acast dot com slash talking hyphen tv hyphen with hyphen my hyphen mum then you'll find us on there as well and then we'll hopefully be on more places in the future and i'll keep you updated on that so that's gonna do us mum yes i think i've covered everything haven't i you have indeed yeah (laughs) yep (laughs) <laughs> right, well, there's nothing else left for us to say, I suppose, then, really. I'm glad that we're back. This was lots of fun. Yes. And I'm looking forward to next week's one-year anniversary show. Yes, our birthday. Mmm. Yeah. Thank you. And just some messages. And cake. <laughs> yes, oh, yes, and cake. <laughs> cake. <laughs> Lots of cake. And just cake. <laughs> yeah. Our birthday without cake. <laughs> so... We will thank you again, Mum, for joining me today and we will reconvene here next week for another Talking TV with my mum. Indeed. So you all take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B